Welcome to Spectre AI. I'm Spectre P. In this video, we're exposing one of the most dangerous and least understood attacks in quantum cryptography, the Trojan horse attack, a method that lets hackers steal quantum keys without ever touching the quantum channel. If you enjoy these deep dive quantum security videos, please remember to like and subscribe. It's important for the channel, quick and free for you. Now, let's get into it. Before we talk about the Trojan horse attack, let's ground ourselves for one moment. In BB84, Alice sends single photons, each prepared in one of four possible polarization states. Bob measures them in randomly chosen bases. And the entire security of the protocol depends on one thing, that no one can learn Alice's basis choices without disturbing the photons. But here's the problem. Even if the quantum rules are perfect, the hardware isn't. And that's exactly where today's attack begins. Trojan horse attacks are some of the simplest and most dangerous ways to break a quantum key distribution system. Instead of tampering with the photons traveling between Alice and Bob, Eve probes the hardware itself. She sends a bright, high-power pulse directly into Alice's device. Inside, that light reflects off the modulators and internal components. And even though only a tiny, low-power reflection comes back out, it carries information about Alice's secret settings. That's all Eve needs to start stealing the key, without ever touching the quantum channel. Here's how the Trojan horse attack actually works under the hood. Eve sends bright classical pulses into Alice's device at the same telecom wavelength the system normally uses, about 1550 nanometers. But unlike single photon signals, these probe pulses are millions to billions of times stronger, typically in the microwatt to milliwatt range. Inside Alice's phase modulator, a small fraction of that power reflects back. The reflectivity is tiny, sometimes only 1% sometimes as low as one ten-thousandth. But it doesn't matter, because the returning signal follows a simple relationship. P out equals R times P in. Even a very weak reflection is still strong enough for classical detectors to measure. And here's the key point. Those reflections carry phase information set by Alice's modulator. That phase leakage tells Eve exactly which basis Alice used and once she knows the basis, the key is no longer secret. Once the reflected pulse returns to Eve, the key information isn't in its power. It's in its phase. As the light passed through Alice's modulator, it picked up a phase shift that depends on which basis Alice selected, rectilinear or diagonal. By comparing the phase of the reflected wave to her own reference pulse, Eve can measure that shift directly. If the phase matches one pattern, Alice used the Z basis. If it matches the other, she used the X basis. And with the basis known, Eve can intercept Alice's photons, prepare her own, and resend them to Bob, all without raising the QBER. Now here's the part that makes the Trojan horse attack so dangerous. Once Eve learns Alice's basis, she can measure the photons in the correct basis every single time. That means her intercept and resend operation becomes almost lossless, introducing virtually no additional errors into the channel. So the QBER stays right where Alice and Bob expect it to be, inside normal noise levels and well below the 11% abort threshold. Remember, we calculated this threshold in video 16. So, from the perspective of Alice and Bob, the system looks perfectly healthy. And because the error rate never rises, Alice and Bob have no statistical signal whatsoever that Eve is inside their device. So, how do we defend against a Trojan horse attack? The first line of defense is an optical isolator, essentially a one-way valve for light. It blocks Eve's incoming probe pulses before they ever reach Alice's hardware. Next, power monitoring or watchdog detectors watch for unusual spikes in brightness. If Eve tries to inject a strong pulse, 
Alice can immediately shut the system down. A more advanced approach is to randomize the modulator's behavior by adding decoy states. That breaks the clean phase correlation that Eve relies on to learn the basis. And finally, protocols like measurement device independent QKD remove this attack surface entirely by taking Alice's device out of the trust model. Modern QKD systems use a combination of these defenses to stay ahead of Trojan horse attacks. So here's what really matters about the Trojan horse attack. Eve doesn't fight the quantum rules. She bypasses them by attacking the hardware itself. Her bright probe pulses pull tiny reflections out of Alice's device, and those reflections reveal Alice's basis choice. Once the basis is known, Eve can steal the key without increasing the QBER, which makes the attack effectively invisible. And that's why secure QKD isn't just about quantum mechanics. It's about careful, disciplined engineering. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us if you subscribe. And if you want to go deeper, visit specterai.ai for 55 real-life quantum security labs. Learn by doing. You can also check out our books on Amazon and leave a comment below to tell us what you want to learn next. Thanks again for being here, and we'll see you in the next video.